Hello everybody, welcome back to Eco152. In this video, we are doing chapter 6 of the module, which is a simple Canadian model of the economy. So if you have the old or the first edition of the textbook, you'll find this topic under chapter 3. So in this chapter, we are going to explain the total income, the total production and the total spending. We are also going to explain the equilibrium level of the total income in the economy, then determine the consumption function, indicate what are the determinants of investments, and then explain the multiplier effect in the economy. So before the start of week 7 lecture 2, you are required to do a pre-reading of section 6.1 and 6.2 of your textbook. You are also required to review the slides for chapter 6 and watch the following two YouTube video clips. Your lecturers are available on a Canva chat room during lecture times. Also, please email your lecturer to determine the forms of consultation, for example, Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp call, and etc. 6.1, production, income, and spending, macroeconomic theory. Macroeconomic theory versus measurement. So there are three purposes of macroeconomic theory, where the first one is to explain the aggregate behavior of the economy, and then the second one is to predict or forecast what may happen in the future of the economy, and then the third one is for the government and the policy makers to provide some policies to compensate for market failures. However, there's no theory that will ever provide a perfect prediction. The link below provides a video that has a background and explanation of what Canadian economics is all about. More recently, there was a great recession, which caused a resurgence of Canadian economics with added quantitative easing. Microeconomics equilibrium, production denoted by Y, which is equals to income denoted by Y as well, is equal to spending that is denoted by A. Production creates income, and then income creates spending. Income is therefore spent on goods and services, and then spending induces more production. Production and income are the two sides of one coin, but will spending always be equal to income and production? Not necessarily. If you watched the video on the previous slide, you will see that Keynes identified demand as a problem. How is equilibrium determined? Equilibrium is a situation where there's no tendency to change. In the Keynesian model, this is where the production or income is equal to spending. So there are three possibilities. Spending may be greater than production, or spending may be less than production, or spending may be equal to production. So what if spending is more than income? If spending is more than income, this means that demand is greater than production. So there is excess demand. So therefore households use their savings or credit to fulfill their demand. Firms who hold their inventories in stores experience an unplanned decrease. Then the incentive for firms is to increase production to refill inventories. But what if spending is less than income? Demand is less than production, meaning that there is a market surplus. There are more goods than what households want. Part of income is saved. The inventories held by firms in stores increase unexpectedly. So in order to maintain levels of stock and in inventories, firms have the incentive to decrease production. For more information on section 6.1, please click on the link below it will direct you to a video and then you'll get more clarity review questions for section 6.1 so you can do this practice questions to make sure that you understand whatever that we did on the previous slides the basic assumptions of the Keynesian model the first assumption is that the economy consists of households and firms only so the implication of this assumption is that the total spending consists of consumption spending and investment spending. And then the following assumption is that there is no government. 
The implication is that the model cannot be used to analyze government spending or taxes. Another assumption is that there is no foreign sector. The model cannot be used to analyze exports, imports, exchange rate, trade policies, and exchange rate policy. Another assumption is that prices are always given. So the model cannot be used to explain inflation. Wages are given. The model cannot be used to study the workings of the labor market. And then another assumption is that the money stock and interest rate are given. The implication is that the model cannot be used to study the financial markets or monetary policy. And then the last assumption is that spending or demand is the driving force that determines the level of economic activity. So the implication is that production or supply adjusts passively to changing in spending. Review questions for section 6.2. List the assumptions of the simple Keynesian model, which is what we just did. So for week 7, lecture 3, please do a pre-reading for sections 6.3, 6.4 and 6.5 of your textbook. Also review the slides for chapter 6 and then watch the following YouTube clip. Your lectures are available on a Canva chat room during lecture times. Also, please email your lecturer to determine the forms of consultation, for example, Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp call, and etc. 6.3 Consumption Spending Components of Spending Who are the actors in the economy? So, the actors in the economy are the households and firms, where the household spending is consumption spending that is denoted by letter C. And then the firm spending is investment spending, which is denoted by letter I. Microeconomics are about aggregates. So aggregate spending is denoted by letter A, which is the spending of all actors in the economy. So aggregate spending is equivalent to C plus I. Consumption. Consumption is on durable goods, that is things that last longer, property, house, goods, furniture, etc. And then consumption is also on semi-durable goods, that is goods that last for medium term, such as clothes and shoes. And then it's also on non-durable goods, goods that do not last for long, such as food, and then services, such as minibus, taxi rides. So the major factor that affects consumption is income. And the relationship between consumption spending and the total income is the consumption function. So the consumption function describes the relationship between consumption spending and income, where C is a function of Y. There is a positive relationship between consumption spending and income. So when income increases, it means that consumption also increases, but by less than the increase in income. Therefore, C is positive even when income is zero. So this is the function of consumption, where C is equivalent to C bar plus small letter C times Y, where C bar is equivalent to autonomous consumption spending, and small letter C times Y is induced consumption spending. So basically, this graph shows consumption spending and income which is the consumption function. So this line from here to here is the consumption function. And then this triangle shows the induced consumption. And then the rectangle is autonomous consumption. Autonomous consumption is consumption when income is zero. But how is autonomous consumption possible? It is possible because people use their savings or credit to spend. So the intercept of the y-axis shows the autonomous consumption. Induced consumption, that is the response of consumption when income changes. It is positive if income increases and consumption increases. So the change in C is the change in consumption and the change in Y is the change in income. If the change in C is less than the change in Y, it means that some of the additional income is saved. 
And then the ratio between change in C and change in Y is called the marginal propensity to consume and is denoted by the small letter C. So this is the graph for the consumption function that we saw earlier on, where the vertical axis represent consumption spending and then the horizontal represent income. And then this rectangle here is autonomous spending and then this is induced consumption and this small letter c is the marginal propensity to consume and then this is the function of consumption non-income determinants of consumption it's the interest rate it's the expectation it's wealth income distribution and other factors such as age distribution and the level of taxation review questions for section 6.3 so these are also the questions that you can practice in order to see that you understand everything that we did in section 6.3. 6.4 saving. Households do not spend all of their income. The part that is not spent is saved. Therefore y is equals to c plus s. That is income is equals to consumption plus savings. Factors that affect aggregate saving are essentially the same factors that are affecting aggregate consumption. Therefore, the marginal propensity to save is given as S, where S is equivalent to 1 minus C. Saving. We know that income is equal to C plus S, and MPC plus MPS is equivalent to 1. So, from this function, if we solve for S, we will get s equivalent to 1 minus c. And from this function, if we solve for s, we'll get s equivalent to y minus c. And from the previous slides, we know that c is equals to c bar plus small letter c times y. So we'll substitute the c by the c. And then we open the brackets, we'll multiply throughout. And then we put like terms together and then we simplify to get the value of s. So we know that s bar is equivalent to minus c bar. So instead of the c bar here, or this function, we'll put s bar because we know that they are equivalent. And then we get our s equivalent to s bar plus one minus c times y. 6.5, investment spending. Production and the purchase of capital goods or goods used for the production of other goods. Investment takes place by firms. Investment spending is assumed as not a function of income. Investment is therefore autonomous with respect to income. There is no systematic relationship between investment and income. Investment spending. I is equivalent to I bar. And the bar above indicates it's autonomous. So this graph shows the investment spending, where the vertical axis show the investment spending, and then this is the income. So this part is the autonomous investment. The investment decision. Firms invest because they hope to end profits. The investment decision involves three important variables. That is the cost of capital goods, the interest rate, and the expected revenue to be earned from the capital goods. Review questions for 6.4. So you can also review these questions to make sure that you understand section 6.4. Continue reading during the extended vacation. So you can read section 6.6 .6 and 6.9 .6 of your textbook. Review the slides for chapter 6. And then watch the YouTube clips. And then, as you know, your lectures are available on a Canva chat room during lecture times. And also, you can email your lecturer to determine the forms of consultation that suit you. For example, Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp calls, etc. And then, because of the time, I'll have to end this video here and continue with part two on the next one. Thank you for your attention.